Hi there guys, it's me Brian Cockrell. My guest today is Steve Norton. Steve, can you introduce yourself and what you about your credentials? Yeah, of course Brian. Well I'm Steve Norton, I'm an anxiety specialist. So the last 25 years I've been helping people with anxiety in different forms. Even from panic attacks, fears, phobias, general anxiety and different things like that. And I'm here to I actually just popped around Brian's today to get a copy of his book. Yeah. Um, we've just got on like a house on fire. Brilliant. And we're here. So I actually just thought, we'd, you know, while we're here, yeah. why not talk about anxiety? Why not talk about a little bit about things that people have, some things that people suffer with? And yeah, that's why we're He's here. He's also so. written a book on it. It's called The Principles of Life. Uh, it's in shops, isn't it? You can get it. It is, yeah. Get, yeah. Um, so it's really good to read. I've had a quick look at it and yeah. it looks, seems really good. He's in the same stuff as me, but he's a professional, so I'm just an amateur. But I've done this for a long time for my brother and my mum. It's the same type of thing as he knows. We've, we've talked about, we both know what we're talking about, but he's a little bit more, obviously, experienced more than me. He's a professional. He does, you've got your own um, office and that, haven't you? Yeah, I've got my own practice. What I do day and day out with people is help people with anxiety. Uh, yeah. But it's like one of the things that you said earlier on, which is very, very true, is that unless you've had anxiety, you don't really understand it. That's right, yeah. And so my own past, I had a lot of anxiety in the past. I got over it. And all I do now, day in, day out, is help people to well, get over well, themselves. Well, what I used to ask people, I used to say, what was what were you like at school when oh, you first started? Was, just very, very nervous, were you, very were, were you popular? Or were you, was no, I definitely no. wasn't popular. Right. I, 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 was, I was probably that like, weird kid at school, that yeah, strange yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, didn't have loads of friends. Is this still anxiety even then, as a kid? I don't know. I think... I think when you are younger, you're almost like you're finding yourself. You're like, yeah. you're not comfortable in your own skin. And I work with a lot of teenagers now, and it's so common. It must be even worse now because we didn't have social media when we were kids. Yeah. So we had nothing to like base ourselves on. Probably like yourself, I grew up with the likes of Stallone, Schwarzenegger, yeah. and they were the sort of people that we, we like all aspired aspire yeah, to yeah, be like. Yeah. But Which we didn't you know, have Instagram, did we? Didn't no, have all that no. stuff. And a lot of things and all today, so. Like, a lot of people are then trained and it helps get rid of anxiety sure. and depression. It's one Absolutely. of the best things that it produces natural gamma, endorphins and beta and stuff like that. But Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's fantastic this guy being on today. It's just a treat to have him here. So um, what else would you say is the most thing people have is about fear? The, the biggest problem that people have today is that they fear imaginary events. Everybody lives in a world now of what if. What if this happens? What if that happens? And they're always imagining the future of what they don't want to happen, which is really anxiety in a nutshell, is thinking about what you don't want to happen. Yes. And then your body then gives you the chemicals that goes along with those thoughts. Which is the bad chemicals that start your panic attacks and yeah. spirals out because you can't sleep, your anxiety comes through the roof and blood pressure goes up and everything. So them bad thoughts, what you're having, um, like you're saying, Steve, um, is... The bad thoughts if you have from the past. A lot of people play the victim and things. Can you can you, you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very hard to get over victim it's, mentality. It's a bit horrible saying it. Yeah, it it is what you do. Yeah. I used to do when I was on the coke. I'd take the crack and coke. Mm. I'd go, ah, oh, she's on my head, and I eat on my head, and it's an excuse to yeah. take the drug, which is an addiction, obviously. Yeah. But it's obviously things that have happened to me in the past. But when you get over the things that have happened to you in the past, because if you keep reliving them every day. You're going to be living in the past. You're never going to get out of the past. So you've got to stop thinking about the the, the the memories of the past make you bad. Stop thinking about them and think of the good memories and live up to every day as if it's your last day. And stop being panic attacked about this and panic. You start having panic attacks because you think you're going to have a panic attack. Absolutely. You, yeah. you see, with panic attacks, people think they happen randomly, but in reality, you're planning them before they actually That's happen. Right. Yes. In your mind, you're already rehearsing your next panic attack. Yeah. You think to yourself, well, I hope it doesn't happen in, say, Tesco's. <laughs> then you start running the movie through yeah. of it happening in Tesco's. Brilliant. Then you think to yourself, shit, I hope that doesn't happen. But what you're actually doing without realising it is you're actually set, rehearsing. Set yourself up for Lining it, yeah. it up. Yeah. And the next one's coming. Yeah. Come and when on. it happens, you say to yourself, well, I knew that would happen. Because your body played it out in your head and your body set yourself up. It's like... Uh, Probably make your dinner in it. Well, I knew it was going to have beans on yeah. toast today because <laughs> you've upped the tin of beans and made the toast. So, yeah, but so, yeah, what, absolutely. What, what is the, um, do you think it's it's happened a lot with kids now, isn't it? With, uh, with the social media, you know, the, you've got to wear these clothes, you've got to have this phone, you've got to have that. A lot of kids, I think, are, are going a bit crackers through these um, gangster rap, um, yeah. where they're brainwashing them, they're shooting people, stamping people, things. A lot of kids are carrying knives in those days as well. I think it's like to show off and, and to be the, the big man, isn't it, type of thing. Absolutely. 
really what you've got to watch out for is what you're putting inside of your head. Yeah. You know, let's face it, with social media, when it, if you actually looked at your Facebook page now, I actually looked at that Facebook page and looked at every post that was on, 95% of that would, would either be negative or annoying. Yeah. yeah. So if you're spending, say, four to five hours a day on social media, you're literally pouring that stuff into your mind. That's right. And what happens is when that stuff goes into your mind, then triggers feelings, emotions, adrenaline, cortisol gets fired into your body. That then gets you tense. And there's no outlet because you're constantly yeah. doing it over and over yeah. again. So it's so like your body is constantly yeah. on standby mode for problems even though these problems don't even exist. And so I was listening to a man called George Spencer, who's a psychologist and, and professor. He says people get addicted to being, like to be paranoid, because the mm, fear, uh, the, the, the adrenaline and the yeah. stuff and all the, the stuff we've just said, all the all the, uh, the chemicals are working in your body, they don't get that, so they, they yeah. need to be hooked. They're like hooked yeah. on the fear type of thing. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. It's almost like you get the drama that gives you something. Yeah, they never know. So when you don't have it,